Presents Part 1 A blind king once ruled the city of Harar. He was very unhappy because he could not see. He called many doctors from different countries, but none of them could help him. One day, a fortune teller came to Harar. The king called him to the palace. Tell me, he said, will I always be blind? Or will my sight come back to me? Can anyone help me? Yes, said the fortune teller. One person can help you. You have a son, a good, wise prince. Send your son to the sea. There he must find the king of the seas, the great whale. He must catch the whale and bring him to you. Then your sight will come back to you, and you will see. The king was very happy. He called for the prince and said, Take two soldiers with you, my son, and go to the sea. Catch the whale, the king of the seas, and bring him to me. Then my sight will come back to me. The prince was brave and good. He took two soldiers with him, and they went down to the sea. They hunted the whale for a long time long time, and at last they caught him. Now the whale was very big, and from his head to his tail he was covered with gold. He lay in the prince's net and looked at him. Why did you catch me, prince? he said. I will take you to my father, said the prince. He is blind. Only you can help him to see. I can't help your father, said the whale, and if you take me out of the water, I will die. Is that true? Can't you help my father? asked the prince. No, said the whale, and if I take you out of the water, you will die. Is that really true? asked the prince. Yes, said the whale. Then I will let you go, said the prince. Thank you, oh thank you, said the whale. You have saved my life, and now I want to help you. One day you will need me. Come down to the edge of the sea and call to me. Then I will help you. The prince and the soldiers left the sea and went back to the king's palace. Well, my son, said the king, did you find the whale? Yes, father, said the prince. And did you catch him? asked the king. No, father, said the prince. The whale is the king of the seas. He is too strong for me. I could not catch him. The king was sad. Now I will always be blind, he said. I will never be able to see. But the prince's two soldiers were greedy. Let's go to the king and tell him the truth, they said. Then perhaps he will give us some money. So the two soldiers went to the king. Your majesty, they said, the prince, your son, did not tell you the truth. We did catch the whale, but the prince was sorry for him. He let him go. What? said the king. He was very angry now. My son caught the whale, but he did not bring him to me. He is not my son, and I am not his father. Find him and kill him. My son is now my enemy. The two soldiers were sorry now. They liked the prince. They did not want to kill him. They went to him and said, The king is very angry, and he wants to kill you. Come with us. We will take you far away from the palace, and there we will let you go. We will come back to the king, and we will tell him that you are dead. The prince was very sad when he heard this. He did not want to die, so he went with the soldiers far away from the palace. Then they said goodbye to him and let him go. 
Now the poor prince had no home and no father. What can I do? he thought. I must travel through the world alone. Part 2 The prince began to walk along the road. Suddenly an antelope ran in front of him. Oh, sir, please help me, said the antelope. The hunters are chasing me. They're going to kill me. The prince was sorry for the antelope. Come here, he said, and put your head down. The antelope came close to the prince and put his head down. The prince took one of his horns and held it. Soon the hunters ran up. That's our antelope, they said. Give it to us. No, said the prince. This antelope is mine. I chased him and caught him myself. But there was another antelope, bigger and faster than this one. He ran that way, down the hill. Run fast and you will catch him. So the hunters ran away down the hill. The antelope was very happy. You saved my life, he said. And one day, I will save yours. When you need me, call me, and I will come and help you. I will remember that, said the prince, and he went on down the road. Suddenly, a little mouse ran across the path in front of him. Oh, please, sir, said the mouse. Some boys are chasing me. They want to catch me and kill me. Please save me. At once the prince took off his cloak and threw it over the mouse. Then he sat down beside it. Soon the boys arrived. What are you doing? The prince asked them. We're hunting a mouse, answered the boys. Have you seen it? Yes, said the prince. I saw a mouse. It ran into a hole in the ground. You will never find it now. The boys went away, and the prince picked his cloak up off the ground. The little mouse thanked him again and again. You saved me, she said. You saved my life. I am very grateful. One day, you will need me. Call to me then, and I will help you. The prince smiled. How can a little animal like a mouse help a man like me? He thought, but he thanked the mouse and walked on, down the road. For many days the prince travelled on, over high mountains, through deep valleys, and across fast rivers. At last one evening, he was very tired, and very hungry. Where will I sleep tonight? He thought. He looked up, and saw, far away, a beautiful, big house. It was shining like gold in the last light of the evening sun. Quickly, the prince ran towards the house. What kind of house is this? He thought. It is made of gold. He put out his hand and touched the wall. It was hard and cold. It was made of pure gold. The door opened and the guard came out. Who are you? Said the guard. What do you want? I'm a poor man, said the prince. I'm tired and hungry. I need a bed for the night and something to eat. Who lives here, in this beautiful house? Will they let me come in? Ah, my poor friend, said the guard. You must be very careful. The owner of this house, my mistress, is a sorceress. She is very beautiful, but she is cruel. Many men fall in love with her. They want to marry her. She gives them a test. She sends them away to hide, then she looks for them. If I cannot find you, I will marry you, she says, but if I find you, you must die. And does she find the men? Asked the prince. Always, said the guard. Many men have died. 
Look, here are their bones. The prince looked inside the gate, and saw the bones of the dead men. Tell me more about your mistress, he said to the guard. Is she really very beautiful? Very, very beautiful, said the guard. She is the most beautiful woman in the world. Then I will take the test, said the prince. I will hide, and if she finds me, I will die. But if she does not, I will marry her and be happy. The guard was sorry for him. Don't do it, sir, he said. I told you. My mistress always wins. But the prince did not listen to him. Take me to her, he said. Part 3 Seated readily in a room adorned with golden hues and perched upon a magnificent golden chair, the sorceress radiated unparalleled beauty. Instantly captivated, the prince found himself falling deeply in love with her. Will you marry me? He ardently proposed. The sorceress regarded him with a discerning gaze. His handsomeness, goodness and wisdom ended him to her. I am inclined to marry you, she replied, but first, you must dispel my malevolent enchantment. Conceal yourself, return after four days, and if I fail to locate you, we shall wed. However, should I find you, your life shall be forfeit. Determined, the prince agreed. You shall not find me, he confidently declared. Early the next morning, the prince departed the golden abode and made his way to the sea. Standing at the water's edge, he called upon the king of the seas, and the obedient whale swiftly emerged. The sorceress seeks my demise, the prince implored. Conceal me, or I shall perish. The whale obligingly opened its colossal mouth, and the prince descended into its stomach, hidden from view. For three days and nights, the sorceress fervently searched for the prince. Across mountains and through valleys, her pursuit was relentless. On the fourth day, she resorted to her magic telescope. Now I shall find him, she declared, spotting the prince within the whale's belly. As day's end approached, the whale returned to the sea's edge, allowing the prince to emerge unharmed. He triumphantly returned to the golden dwelling. Here I am, he announced to the sorceress. You failed to find me, and now, by your own accord, you must marry me. But find you, I did, the sorceress countered. For three days and nights, I scoured mountains and valleys. Only with my magic telescope did I spot you within the whale's stomach. The prince's heart sank. So, I must face death, he resigned. Not yet, the sorceress conceded. Your concealment was astute, and I grant you another opportunity. Hide once more. With haste, the prince retraced his steps. Antelope. He called out. Come to me. I beseech your aid. The antelope promptly responded, leading the prince to a secluded cave. Hide me, or the sorceress will claim my life, the prince pleaded. Concealed within the cave, the prince believed he had secured an impenetrable refuge. Yet, for three days and nights, the sorceress relentlessly pursued him. On the fourth day, her magic telescope revealed his whereabouts. There he is, in the antelope's cave, she exclaimed. Once again, the prince returned to the golden dwelling. Here I am, he declared. Did you find me? If not, you must honor our agreement. Yes, I found you, the sorceress admitted. Through deserts and forests, I searched for three days and nights. My magic telescope revealed you within the antelope's cave. With a heavy heart, 
the prince anticipated his demise. You must end my life now, he said. However, the sorceress, captivated by his handsome visage, relented. Not yet, she declared. Your hiding place was formidable, and I grant you one more chance. Hide once more. The prince hastened away from the golden dwelling. Mouse. He called out. Come to my aid. The mouse responded swiftly, guiding the prince deep into the earth to the palace of the king of the jinns. Hide beneath the king's throne, the mouse instructed. For three days and nights, the prince remained concealed beneath the throne. The sorceress, desperate in her pursuit, scoured the entire world. Yet, her magic telescope yielded no clues to the prince's location. On the fourth day, the mouse retrieved the prince from the Jin palace. Returning to the surface, he went back to the golden dwelling. The sorceress awaited him. I searched far and wide, she admitted, through seas, islands, forests, deserts, mountains, and valleys, yet found no trace of you. My malevolent magic is now broken, and I am ready to marry you. And so, the prince and the sorceress wed. Her malevolent magic remained dormant, and they lived contentedly in the golden house for many blissful years.